Hello and welcome to Shawnee High School for tonight's matchup between the Atlanta Bulldogs and the Shawnee Indians. Tonight's pregame is brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skelter and Evan, conference play underway tonight for both of these teams as they both look to get out to a strong start in the Western Buckeye League. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to this classic WBL rivalry, two teams that know each other very well. Um, and look, a strange week last week for Shawnee. They were up against a really good LCC team. They had some good moments. They ended up falling by quite a big margin, but there were some good things that we saw. We'll talk about those throughout the game. And for Elida, they had a great win over Toledo Rogers, put up 42 points. They rushed really well. And so I'm really looking forward to how these two teams clash. And when you take a look on paper, both of these teams and coaching staff, they're really starting to think alike. Yeah, they really are. And we talk about keys to the game for this one. And we ask each coach, and they both had very, very similar things to say, and maybe for different reasons. So if we look at key number one for us, it's going to be controlling the line of scrimmage. Shawnee last week, they wanted to pass quite a bit, but there were LCC players in the backfield quite a bit. So that offensive line needs to give them time to pass the ball, and they need to be able to mix in the run. So controlling that line of scrimmage is big for them. On the other side, Elida rushed the ball pretty much every play and they did so very effectively so if that offensive line can continue to play as well as they did last week it's going to be a really good game for them and it's going to be tough for Shawnee so again both defenses they're going to have to be tough up front if they're going to stop their opponent. Our second one's explosive plays and if you caught either one of the games last week Shawnee gave up a lot of explosive plays to LCC whether it was deep passes or broken plays and Parker is a great quarterback for LCC but he put up big numbers on the ground and for Elida as they rush the ball David Etzkorn's a fantastic runner he can break free if he gets into that second level he can make a move and he can be gone and so both coaches both said it we need to eliminate or at least reduce those explosive plays and produce some of our own and then lastly it's going to be know your role both of these teams are teams that thrive on communication and that's a that's a team sport right that's what you need is communication but last week Shawnee under a new coach they looked like a couple times the guys didn't quite know what they were doing there were some plays that either players didn't understand what the calls were uh, just a little bit of confusion so for Shawnee especially, they're going to have to know their role, know the play, and be communicating. And for Elida, when you're a team that likes to run, there's a lot of stuff going on with that offensive line, whether it's polling, whether it's X blocking, whatever it might be. They need to make sure they know what they're doing, make sure that they're communicating, and reduce as many mistakes as they can. It is week two of the high school season, and most people, they might like to look at this one as the adjustment week. Week one comes and goes. They make the adjustment. They see what they have at week two. It is almost time for kickoff here at Shawnee High School. When we return, we'll have that opening kick along with your starters on WOSN. Hi, and welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Tonight's instant replay is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back. Kickoff just about underway as Elida is going to be back for the kickoff. Back deep for the Bulldogs. It's just as I put all of my stuff away that had all of that great information for the fans at home. As kick returners back will be Amari Walsh and David Etzcorn. David Etzcorn had a big week last week. The Bulldogs in general over 300 yards rushing on the ground. Etzcorn led that crew with over 150 yards on the ground. He'll be back along with Walsh. Walsh also has game-breaking speed. Tyler Kimmett, the kicker for the Indians. Well, he will kick it off as that Shawnee defense that struggled a little bit last week and for good reason they had to play you know a quote-unquote video game character and Carson Parker last week who was doing it all got it done on the ground through the air three touchdowns rushing three through the air as he eclipsed 6,000 total yards of total offense it's hard to stop a player like that but a different dynamic here in this Bulldogs team yeah and it'll be Etzcorn to return Etzcorn like you said Tons of carries last week, and he is a huge player for this Elida team. And you see right there off the bat as Escorn just goes right up the middle, bounces off of a couple of would-be tacklers as he is taken down around the 40-yard line, and that's where the Bulldogs will begin their first drive of the night. 
So Etzcorn last week, 16 carries, three touchdowns. Cameron Kaufman had eight carries for 84 yards. And as you mentioned, Amari Wash, another guy who can come out of the backfield and do some big things with some elite speed. He had four carries for 49 yards. Ryan McGue, the quarterback, another four carries for 28. So a lot of different guys that you have to key on if you're this Shawnee defense. And like we said, if Shawnee can get into that backfield and be disruptive, that's going to be their key to success. Quarterback Ryan Magoo in the shotgun. Going to hand this one off to Walsh. Walsh slips as he tried to change direction. He's going to be stopped behind the line for a short one-yard loss to bring up second and 11. Yeah, and that's a great job on the far side by that defensive line. It looked like Hendrick Musser in there on the tackle. We'll get a good look here. That's actually 65, Akis Richardson. Excuse that's me, Akias. Akias. Yep, Akias, a junior starter. Uh, played significant minutes on this varsity team last year, showing you why is, is the junior comes through and gets the stop. Magoo is going to drop back, going to go to the air for the first time tonight. He's going to be pursued, over-pursued that time by the Indians. Going to pull down, call his own number, as he is going to be dropped after about a six-yard gain. And Magoo last week only threw eight passes. He completed half of them, had a touchdown and two interceptions. It's a good job by Shawnee getting him out of the pocket, but he's got some decent speed, and that's a good decision to just take it for a couple yards. You know, that was one of the problems that Shawnee had last week was that over-pursuing as Parker was able to cut back quite a bit and work his way through that defense. Defense and here in the early going, going, we see shades of that. Another issue for this Indians defense last week, getting off the field on third down, and they are faced with a big one here in the early going. Yeah, you see on the replay there, if you're that right linebacker, instead of trying to make that tackle, just kind of break down and make sure he runs into you rather than missing him. Magoo, he's going to roll to his right, looks to air it out. Going to let the pass go, has the, uh, has the receiver out wide for the reception and the first down. And that is going to be the first Citizens National Bank first down of the night. That's Seth Sharp on the comeback route on the far side. Nice little route there as he sat down in some space and a good find. You'll see on the replay here, a little bootleg out to the right side. Nice, easy pitch and catch for the first down. So he lined it going with a little bit of the hurry up, getting back up to the line quickly. Magoo directs traffic. Running back comes in motion. Tried the hard count there, almost drew the offsides penalty. Now they're going to reset. We got a fumble as Magoo's able to fall on it before the Indians get to him, and this is going to be a five-yard loss. That can be tough sometimes. Zetscorn was in motion. When that snap comes in and you have a guy running in front of you, sometimes it hurts that line of sight to the football, and right there gets right through the hands, and it's a nice loss for Shawnee. But Elida, again, passing the ball a couple times early on here, so Shawnee will have to watch for that on second and long. Last week, Elida only went to the air eight times, completing four of those. Two of them, two of those eight passes were interceptions. Only had 73 yards passing. Looking to go to the air more here in the early going. Nice swing pass out as this one was caught by. Actually, that was number number two. That was Seth Sharp. A little high up here. It's kind of hard to see the uh, to see the those numbers from all the way up here look like six to me at first but we are going to have a flag on the play i believe it's going to be a late hit against shawnee uh, they called a, a targeting on shawnee so i believe that's a 15 yard penalty that'll be a first down for elida they just tried to set up a screen right there as the right tackle and right guard released and it was a nice block downfield and then just an illegal tackle from shawnee free 15. So the clock running, 9.20 left to go here in the opening quarter. Elina on the drive. Fresh set of downs as we have another Citizens National Bank first down for the Bulldogs. Magoo takes the snap, going to hand this one up off the middle to, walk, or to Etzcorn. Etzcorn loses it right at the end and in the hands of the Indians. They say they have it. The officials are going to come in, and it looks like they're going to say he was down prior to losing the football. Yeah, that whistle blew pretty early. We're going to get a look at the replay right here. That ball, yeah, it's a really close play. It's going to be tough to say. I think they're going to just call him down, and that's probably the right call when it's that close. You want to make sure you're airing on the side of caution. Yeah, we had a great look at it there at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken instant replay. And I think that was one of those ones, like you mentioned, that regardless of how that call would have went, you'd have had to stuck with it. It did look like he may have been on top of an Indians player when they took it away from him, but too close to call. Bulldogs may have caught a break, second and five. Etzcorn up the middle, fighting through some traffic. He's taken down after a short gain to bring up third and short. 
That's a good job by the defensive line right there. They stood up their blockers and were just able to plug up the inside, and there was nowhere for Edscorn to go as they bring him down for just a short gain that time and a big third down coming up. So another third down opportunity for the Indians to get a stop. The first time Elida went to the air, was able to get an easy completion for the first down. We'll see what they have drawn up here. 8.24 left to go in the opening quarter. We are st still tied at zero on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Magoo takes a snap, hands it off to Edscorn. Edscorn up the middle, fights for the tough yards, and it looks like he might be right at the sticks. It's going to depend on the marks, and the officials are signaling for another Citizens National Bank first down. I'd like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Binkley Realty. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and an extensive network that will get the results that move you. Right there again, Shawnee able to stand up their blockers, but not really getting penetration on the inside. So Etzcorn able to find just a little bit of space, and it's that small pickup that results in a first down. And I'm sure Elida will be content just picking up three or four yards per carry. This one's going to go to Wall. She's going to work the right side, cuts it back up through the center, and he is taken down after a nice gain on first. It's a nice patient run by Wash right there. He tried to get the outside. It wasn't there. It was a good job by the left side of Shawnee's defensive line containing him. But you saw the athleticism from Wash as he just cut right back up field, made a guy miss, and ends up picking up seven yards when he probably could have been down for a loss. This Indian defense needs someone to step up and make a stop here as the Bulldogs work their way into the eyesight of Lima and Delphi's red zone. Another push up the middle. This is going to be another Citizens National Bank first down. And this time just a great push from the offensive line. I'll be light able to push the inside of that defense back a couple yards and a nice pickup for the first. So first and goal from the, for the Bulldogs as they work from the 10-yard line. The Indians looking for the big play, trying to get the stop here, trying to see if maybe they can't limit the Bulldogs to just three on this trip. I could see maybe a fade route to the outside. Sharp's going to be 1v1 against his defender here on the near side to the left of Magoo. Shawnee has to pack that box. This one's going to go to Wash. Wash is going to be stopped after a gain of maybe one. Bring up second and goal from the nine. Good job by Joey Spiker that time, the cornerback coming up and making Wash go inside. And that time, Shawnee had a couple guys there to wait for him, or waiting for him, excuse me. Caius Richardson in on the tackle for Shawnee again. Bulldog offense looks to the sidelines, waiting for the call to come in. Everybody checks those armbands as they get set. That's the thing about a team that likes to run the ball. They can run a ton of time off the clock. We're already halfway through the first quarter on this first possession. A good swing pass out to Edscorn. Edscorn met by a whole host of Indians. What looked like a promising play, Magoo might have hold on to that one a little bit too long. And that time, the Indians actually defending the pass rather than worrying about the run, and it turned out really nicely for them as they sent three guys in pursuit of the receiver. Saw number five, Joel Stern, the first Indian player to get to at scorn as they were able to get him down. So this is going to be third and goal from the seven as the Bulldogs are have their first trip into the eyesight of Lima and Delphi's red zone. Magoo in the shotgun. That's going behind him. Sends Wash in motion. Magoo going to roll to his right. Looks like he's looking for Wash. Wash all alone. A breakdown in coverage by the Indians as Walsh gets the easy touchdown. Yeah, tough to tell if the Indians were in man defense or zone right there as Wash ended up all alone. Looked like maybe that miscommunication. We said know your role. And that time it looked like Shawnee's defensive backfield just not on the same page. So the Bulldogs get on the scoreboard first with a Fat Jack's Pizza touchdown as they come up and line up for the TND Interiors extra point. What happened was two guys went for the slot receiver that was running inside. Wash was running that outside route, and he was wide open. Kick is up, and it is good as Elida now on top, 7-0 after the TND Interior extra point. A impressive opening drive from the Bulldogs. They ate up a ton of time on the clock as they now have the early lead. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsors, Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. 
So after a long drive by the Bulldogs, it'll be the Indians' turn. Last week, if you watched the Shawnee LCC game, you saw a lot of LCC wide receivers getting open behind the Shawnee defense. And again, we, we talked about it right before the break, but knowing your role, knowing what your job is, your responsibilities are in that defensive secondary. And so far tonight, Shawnee still looking to get that sorted out. Squib kit by the Bulldogs ends up in the hands of Derek Lyons. Lyons with a nice return, continues moving as he gets up to near the 40 yard line. So Shawnee also with good field position, as did the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs are able to cash in for the touchdown. Let's see if the Indians can do the same. Yeah, Indians passed it a little more than the Bulldogs did last week. They threw 19 passes. That was Caleb Bacom, who uh, completed 10 of those 19, 144 yards. He did struggle completing passes to his own guys, though, as there were four interceptions. But look, it's early on. That was his first start, and we'll have to see how they adjust. Yeah, Bacon, the junior, getting his first crack at being the starting quarterback for this Indians team last week was a big step forward for him. You know, he had a lot of traffic at his feet, but he did stand tall, had some big completions in that game as he looks to build on that tonight. They're going to hand the ball off first to Christian Jones up the middle as he's going to pick up about three yards on first down. Jones with an early touch last week, only two carries for seven yards. That time picks up a decent gain on first. You'll take three yards on first down when you're trying to get your feet under you. So second and seven for the Indians as Bacon goes under center. Not something we saw very often, if, if at all, last week for this Indians team. The handoff going to go to Lions, and he's going to be stopped as it looks like maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage. That's Elida right there controlling that line of scrimmage. Nice job by the right side of that defensive line. They've got big number 79 in there, Kevin McGuire, 6'2", 325. Tough guy to move. They've got a lot of size on that defensive line, as you'll see all night. Tonight's quarter sponsors brought to you by Binkley Real Estate. Four wide for Shawnee. Bacon in the shotgun, going to look to go deep. Going to have to try to get it done on his feet. Had some space, lowered his head, delivered some contact, and picks up the Citizens National Bank first down. Had to do it the hard way. That was a big first down for the Indians. Yeah, really nice job right there, making something out of nothing and knowing where that first down marker was as he put his shoulder down, got that extra yard, and now a big first down for Shawnee early on. And I think that's probably a big confidence booster for the young quarterback. That wasn't something that he did a whole lot last week. And this week being able to, you know, sometimes you just, you think you can do it. You even know you can do it, but you have to show it to yourself. And right there he showed that he can deliver some contact here on the big level in the big stage and pick up yards that his team needed. This one's going to hand off to Lyons. He's going to work the right side. Almost broke that one, a shoestring tackle as he tried to work through some traffic. It's going to turn what could have been a big play into just a three-yard gain. Yeah, nice job by Lyons making a couple guys miss. Last week he had nine, or excuse me, seven carries for 93 yards. Right there, picks up a nice chunk. Again, a good first down play for Shawnee, moving the ball forward. You know, Derek Lyons does have, does have big play potential. Uh, we saw him break a big run last week, a 58-yard touchdown run, as they're hoping to get more out of him, uh, more like that out of him here tonight as Lions takes that one right into the center of that defense. Another good game to make it third and short. Yeah, and I think Shawnee will take that. And Elida did a nice job running the clock right now. Shawnee controlling this possession, getting nice chunks of yards on each play. Now a third and what is it, about four, we'll call it three and a half. So now Shawnee struggled last week on third down. Didn't pick up key first downs when they needed it. Sometimes got them into, got themselves into trouble with some penalties as they are going to go four wide one more time. No safeties deep on this one. Going to hand this one up off the middle. Works through some traffic as Derek Lyons picks up another Citizens National Bank first down for the Indians as the Indians are putting together an impressive drive to try to answer the Bulldogs. Yeah, he actually dropped the football right there, just fortunate to fall right back on top. I didn't know, I saw a referee beanbag on the far side, but I didn't see the fumble, so I was a little confused, but a great job by our crew on the replay right there, picking that up, and a good job by Shawnee picking up the Citizens National Bank first down. Under two left to go here in the opening quarter. Shawnee with their first possession of the game, as right now, impressive drives on both sides 
have led to long sustained possessions here in the first quarter. Bacon takes the shotgun, hands this one off to Lyons. This time not a whole lot of real estate, trying to get some help from his teammates. And he's going to pick up about two on the first down carry. Yeah, that's a good job staying home by that Elida defense. You get a good look at the replay right here. They only rushed four, but a nice job there by number 50, Parker Krim, keeping his spot and having Lions run right into him, standing him up and dropping him for just a two-yard gain. Seeing a lot of personnel changes from Indians. Almost on every play, three or four Indians running out, running back on. You know, it looks like they're really trying to keep this Bulldog defense guessing on what they're going to do. Yeah, we've seen a ton of different formations here from Shawnee. A couple times they've gone under center, a couple times out of the shotgun. Now they'll run it to the right. Lions a little bit more of a patient carry this time. Works that right side. Takes what the defense gives him that time, and we're going to have a penalty. It looks like this one's going to go on Amari Walsh. Some extra pushing there after the play ended. Yeah, and that's a tough one right there. Your team kind of on their heels. You're already up 7 nothing. Got to keep your head about you. And right there, just some extracurricular activity, and it'll be free 15 for Shawnee. We saw that on the last possession for Elida as well. Both teams trading those big penalties. Yeah, they had you know, Bulldog defense oh. had forced Shawnee to. Actually, the referee called a penalty against Shawnee. He's going to talk with them and try to get it sorted out here. Yeah, I think the, the official just pointed the wrong direction, get things straightened up. But, you know, as we were saying, as, as we were saying, though, that Bulldog defense had picked up the stop that they needed, had forced another third down. And unfortunately, with the extra pushing there towards the end, you know, uh, the first down on another Citizens National Bank first down, it's a rivalry game. We know these kids know each other. I'm sure there was a lot of talk going back and forth all week long. But now you have uh, the uh, Shawnee Indians, excuse me, in the eyesight of Lima and Delphus red zone for the first time tonight. Bacon going to hand this one off the line. No, he's going to keep it, pulls it down himself, calls his own number. He's going to work to the outside, has one man to beat, cuts back inside, spin move. Caleb Bacon looks like he was watching some film last week of the opposing quarterback and trying to get it done himself. Yeah, and a nice little read option right there. Bacon saw that big hole on the left side, keeps the ball, makes another or makes a guy miss, excuse me. But again, I really like what Shawnee is doing, giving Elida some different looks. We didn't see that a ton last week from Shawnee, and so Elida didn't see that on film. And right there, they're very confused because Bacon doesn't really run the ball often on his own. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. A fast-moving first quarter. Both teams only with one possession. Shawnee knocking on the doorsteps of the end zone, looking to make this one even. We'll step aside and be back with the second quarter on WOSN. Welcome back. Dr. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Second quarter just about underway here at Shawnee High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skeleter. And Evan, an impressive opening quarter from both teams. Elida gets on the scoreboard. Shawnee holds it the rest of the first quarter, and they are knocking on the doorsteps of scoring themselves. It's not often you only see one possession per team in a quarter. Shawnee hasn't even finished their first possession yet, and we're into the second. But this is a really good drive for Shawnee. Certainly want to cap it off with a touchdown. But for a team that lost by such a big margin last week, to get a little more confidence and see that you can stay in this game, that's big for them. Bacon under center, going to hand this one off to Lions. Lions going to work the right side of the line. He's going to get turned upside down, but now before he gets down to the three-yard line as the Indians continue to move deeper into the eyesight of Lima in Delphus red zone. This Indians offensive line is doing a nice job now. They're not getting a ton of push and getting their guys back, but they're holding their blocks. And if you can hold your block like that and give your runner time to get past you and, and get into the second level, you're going to be successful. So right now, that's been key for Shawnee. And Lions are showing great vision right now, waiting for that hole to open, having patience and just taking. They're not trying to do too much, taking what the defense is giving them, and it's moving them down the field. They're going to hand it off one more time to Lions. Lions trying to get those yards the tough way. And it looks like he's going to get down just shy of the goal line as he's going to be stopped inside the one-yard line. Yeah, they're going to have about an inch to go on this next play, third and very short. We'll take a look here. So we'll see what they end up doing. I would imagine they're going to run two plays if they have to. I don't see them kicking a field goal down with just a couple inches left to the goal line. They've done a nice job in the running game. We'll see what they do. Bacon will go under center. 
I like this new wrinkle of the Indians' offense as well with Bacon under center. He spent all last game in the shotgun. This time he's going to keep it himself, going to take the push, and touchdown, Shawnee. No nonsense right there. Go under center, run over your center's butt, and score that touchdown. Good job by Bacon and a big score for Shawnee to answer. So the Shawnee Indians get into the end zone for a Fat Jack's Pizza touchdown, and they are a T&D interior extra point away from tying it. And again, what a great job by both of these offensive lines so far tonight, creating some holes for their runners to go through, and both teams doing a nice job controlling the possession game. He lighted with about six minutes on their first possession, then here's Shawnee with six or seven minutes on theirs. And this kick is no good as Kimmett pulls this one wide left. So it'll be a seven to six ball game. We're gonna step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 10.43 left to go here in the first half. Shawnee getting ready to kick this one off to Elida. A long sustained possession by Elida. Shawnee answers, unfortunately not able to connect on the extra point as they are down one. Metzger going to take the kickoff, works back up the middle, has a lot of space. Fights through one tackle, works towards the sideline, going to get forced out shy of the 35-yard line. That's Corn has some nice size right there. You don't re usually see returners with that much size, but he's able to bounce off a couple tacklers and get upfield. But for Elida, they're not going to have to do anything differently, right? They did a nice job on that first possession, ran six minutes off the clock. I think they're just going to stick with what they're doing. If you're Shawnee, probably want to think about packing the box a little bit more, right? Now, the secondary has struggled so far this season, but... The running game has been big for Elida early. I'd like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective market campaigns, and an extensive network that will get you the results that move you. So quarterback Magoo comes out to lead his team on their second possession of the game. Magoo in the shotgun. Going to turn around and hand this one off to Edscorn as he tries to work on the left side. He's going to be stopped after a short game. It's a good defensive call there by Shawnee. They blitzed right up the middle on the right side, right where the run went. You'll see here they get into the defensive backfield as number six, Garrett Looney, blitzed right there in the two gap. So a good job by Shawnee. I know it's still two yards, but slowing this run game down is going to be key. Garrett Looney is a huge part of this Indian defense. He is all over the place, a fierce linebacker. He comes up, he helps in the run game, he helps in the pass game. He seems to be everywhere wreaking havoc. Magoo going to roll, looks to square. He's chased down and stopped for a sack as Shawnee comes up with a huge loss on second down. And that's the danger of rolling your quarterback out to his non-throwing side. He's not able to see the back side as Shawnee blitzes. He had no idea that Drew Isley was coming. Yeah, Drew did a great job coming off of that edge. He had a long way to run to track him down, but never stopped. As you saw Magoo a couple times, looked like he wanted to get his shoulder square, but Shawnee didn't give him the space, and that led to that big sack. So now with the third and long, Shawnee's going to put two safeties back, and they're playing way off of these Elida receivers. Actually, they're playing kind of three deep here. And we talked about the issues that this Shawnee secondary is having here in the early season. This exact situation is what really wreaked havoc last week as LCC found themselves in third and long multiple times, but made huge gains out of those, including two uh, long touchdowns uh, passes by Parker. And that is, you'd have to imagine what they want to talk about here in the huddle during this Metzger Financial Services timeout. No question, want to stay on the same page. In the defensive secondary, they're going to put three safety, or they looked like they were going to put three safeties back right there. So they're going to try to make sure Elida doesn't get in behind them. Now, one thing we saw last week was they let Parker run around that backfield quite a bit. And when that happens, you start to see receivers breaking off their routes and finding openings in the defense. So not only do you have to do a good job in the secondary, but you're going to have to make Magoo make a decision early and not let him spend a lot of time running around back there. Yeah, and the one thing I will say, I, you know, I had the pleasure of calling that game last week. You know, they, Carson Parker kept those plays alive. Shawnee's defense was in that backfield. And you saw what can happen when they're in the backfield. You know, no offense to Ryan, uh, to Ryan Magoo, but Carson Parker's just different in this part of the area. So if the defense can continue to get in the backfield like that, they should have more success than they saw last week. Here goes Magoo. He's going to roll, looks to pass deep down the middle. 
has a man, triple covers. They're going to go up for it. This one's going to be picked off by the Indians. Yeah, and that time, that's what you do. You put those three safeties back. They make sure no one gets in behind them. And that pass came, and Shawnee did a nice job. It was basically three or four guys back there in coverage. And we have an injured player as Shawnee has a player down. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to John Stockter DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Prayers to Joel Stern, the safety player who was hurt for Shawnee as he had to be helped off by his teammates. They're going to work on him on the sidelines. Hopefully he'll be okay and the Indians can get him back. But a big defensive stand ended in an uh, interception for the Indians, and they have a chance now to have another long sustained drive here on offense as Derek Lyons makes the first guy miss, fights for some more tackles, and he is taken down after about a four-yard gain, but he learned or he earned those the hard way. Yeah, that's a good run right there from Lions, but going back to that defensive possession for Shawnee, the biggest and best thing you can do as a defense against a team that likes to run the ball is put them in third down and long, and that's what they did right there. And they also did a nice job containing the edge, so Magoo didn't have anywhere to go. He had to step up in the pocket, took a big hit, threw it into triple coverage. That's exactly what you want if you're Shawnee. That's a great job. So second and seven, 8.30 left to go here in the half. Make him going to hand this one off to Lions one more time. No reason to get away from what's working as Lions picks up another three yards. And quite frankly, you know, Lions is doing a good job. He, he's taking hits and he's running very strong. But a lot of these yards are because of how much push that offensive line is getting. Yeah, that time the left side of the offensive line looked really good. We've seen the right side do some really good things as well as you see big number 74, Reese Peterson, get up into the hole, get that linebacker in the second level, which allowed – Lions to get into that second level and pick up those yards. So third and four for the Indians from the 40-yard line. A big third down here for the Indians. A lot of showing blitz here up the middle. A little bit of a high snap. Bacon has to gather that one in. Going to work through some arm tackles. And then again, a hard run by Bacon, and he is fired up. Caleb Bacon picking up six yards and a big Citizens National Bank first down for Shawnee. Yeah, I really love Bacon getting up after that play and getting fired up, getting his team fired up, getting the crowd into the game as well. That's a nice job making the guy miss. Now Elida showing that blitz early, and so Bacon was kind of able to understand that we're going to have a guy come right up the middle. He took a step to his left, saw that opening, and got up the field. You're seeing a big step up in maturity and experience from Bacon last week to this week, and that's what Shawnee needed. We talked about it. It's the week of adjustments, and Shawnee looks like they have made some. Lions one more time up the middle, a hard run, dragging a couple of Bulldog defenders along with him, as this will make it second and five for Shawnee. And another nice push by that offensive line like you talked about. They're able to push, and, and I'll tell you what, we talked about how big Kevin McGuire is in the middle, but they've been able to get some leverage, get underneath him, and push him back quite a bit. And sometimes it's not even about the push. It's just about standing up and holding your yes. ground. And even when they haven't been able to drive them, they've been keeping them from coming back into them as Lions really then is just doing the rest of the work. So Elida looking for a stop here on second and five, like to have a third down and long situation. They break through the line as that defensive line was tired of losing those one-on-one -on -one battles as they get in the backfield and they drop Shawnee for a loss. Yeah, it's a good job. Tyler Seifker kind of turned his shoulders right there to get past this blocker, dove into the legs of the ball carrier and dropped him for a loss. Now a bigger third down. This is one of the longer third downs Shawnee has seen tonight. Clock still running. Right around six minutes left to go here in the half. And Shawnee was going to take a Metzger Financial Services timeout and talk about it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Third and long for the Indians. Last third down, we saw Caleb Bacon able to pick it up on the ground using his feet. Made a couple of Bulldog players miss to pick that one up. We'll see what the Indians choose to do here. They're going to show blitz one more time. Pass across the middle. He had a receiver wide open, but rushed that throw a little bit as it goes high. Just out of the reach of its intended receiver, Hunter Rapp. And that is going to bring up fourth down for the Indians. That's a good hot pass right there. But like you said, pass just a little bit over the top of Shawnee, or the, the intended receiver, excuse me. And now it looks like the Indians will punt. 
But you get to fit, flip the field a little bit. Not a huge deal if you're Coach so Lewis. I'm going to tell you one of the interesting things, though, with this is your starting punter, who has an incredible leg and can be a game changer in the field position, is sitting on the bench right now injured. That's so, a good point. That's not something I recognize. So <laughs> Tyler Kimmick, up. the place kicker, is out for the punt. It's a good snap. No, he gets a great punt okay. off as well. You will definitely take that one as this one is going to roll just down to the 10-yard line, just inside the 10-yard line. And a great punt by Tyler Kimmett, not the usual punter, but Shawnee will take that punt all day. Hey, kickers are kickers, man. And that's a good job just dropping the ball on the foot. And really from that field position, he didn't have to get a nice long spiraling kick. He's able to get that end-to-end -end with – end over end, excuse me, which bounces and gets inside the nine yard line. So a nice job by him coming in. I can promise you though at practice during the week, he's probably practicing punting right behind. So seven to six, Elida coming out for the possession. I'd like to thank tonight's uh, quarter sponsor, Binkley Real Estate. As quarterback Ryan Magoo comes out, the Bulldogs last time ended their drive in an interception. They have a long way to go here on this possession and just under six minutes to do it. Handoff. As I believe that was Ed Scorn, as it was, as he is the main carrier for this Elida team. He's taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a pickup of one. That's Connor Brewer doing a nice job shedding his blocker. He was able to get that leverage, get underneath the blocker's pads, push him back into the backfield, and then he slid off that block and was able to make the tackle. So a really nice play right there. So now we're seeing this Indian team do a much better job as a nice screen pass goes out to Wash, but great job by the defense of Shawnee to get to him quickly and limit that because that looked like from the get-go that Wash might have some space and could have a big gain out of that. Yeah, and that's a good play call right there because Shawnee only had two defenders on that side, but Joey Spiker able to get underneath his blocker and make that play. If he doesn't make the play, there's a good chance the athleticism of Wash picks up a lot of yards for Elida. Third and seven for the Bulldogs. Shawnee would love to be able to force a punt here to give themselves enough time to try to get a score going into the locker room. Magoo checks the armband. Everybody gets themselves lined up. Empty backfield for Elida right here. Magoo going to roll. Looking to go to the air. This one to the sideline and just out of the reach of its intended target, Seth Sharp. As Magoo had pressure one more time, looked like that might have forced that one a little bit wider than Magoo would have liked, and that's going to bring up fourth down. No question about that. You could see he, was, he had to stop his arm short in his motion in order to not hit the helmet of the rusher. And so in doing so, he's not able to tuck that ball into Sharp. It's out of bounds. And now Shawnee with a chance to get some great field position on their third drive of the night. J.J. Spiker and Derek Lyons back for the return for Shawnee. Punt from their own end zone here, which is always dangerous. Logan Croy, the punter, or Crow, excuse me, the punter for Elida. Not a great kick, but it does travel. It traveled a lot farther than I thought it was going to coming off of his foot. And an excellent punt by Crow out of the shadows of his own end zone. Yeah, that ends up being about a 50-yard punt. That's one where sometimes, as a coach, you get a little irritated with your player for not at least getting behind it, calling for a fair catch and grabbing the ball so it doesn't roll another 10 or 15 yards. But for Shawnee, with the game, or you're losing by one point, you obviously don't want to make any mistakes. So probably smart to just let that ball roll and start your possession. Yeah, and you know, sometimes, a lot of times, you'll see players they kind of panic. They realize they're out of position. They reach out to try to snatch sure. it. That's when muffs and turnovers come. So, some, you know, you get a little frustrated. They're not in better position. But on the same time, you kind of have to be happy that they kind of made that veteran decision to, to try not to make something out of nothing. So now 14, 13 left to go. It's Shawnee on offense one more time. Three wide receivers on the near sideline, one on the far sideline. Bacon in the shotgun. Going to hand this one off to Lions. Lions carrying somebody on his back before he is finally stopped and pushed backwards. Yeah, it's not really the spot you want your nose guard to be making tackles as Kevin McGuire did a nice job turning off his block and making the tackle, but the nose guard, you want him making the tackle at the line of scrimmage right there. It's four yards into the backfield, and so a second and six coming up. I'll tell you what, that shows the strength of McGuire as well as he was up top along yeah. the shoulders of Lyon, which usually would mean bad news, but he was able to hold on to him and keep that gain to a minimal. 
Fake him in the shotgun again. He's going to look to air this one out. Pulls it down. Keeps his head above him. A great play fake as Bacon making more moves. And we are watching this young man grow up here in this first half quickly. He is making veteran moves. Check out the least famous recipe instant replay here as he gets his the defender a little bit leaning just enough. Another hesitation move to cut back inside to pick up extra yards. And that is another Citizens National Bank first down. There's a term for that that was coined in a basketball game. He broke his ankles right there on the <laughs> fake to the outside. A nice cut up field and a big game. You know, and to me, even before that move, it was getting that defender to leave his feet even ever so slightly. That paused him and gave Bacon enough space to pick up that first down. This could be a good shot for a little play action pass over the top. Shawnee's running the ball very effectively. They can fake the defense and get him up. They can Bacon's go over the top. This time a design quarterback run, and is there nothing there? So he's going to get stopped for a loss of one. Yeah, there's a little confusion right there. It looked like he did want to pass it to the outside, but someone must have run a route that he wasn't expecting on the outside because he had to pull that ball down and get upfield. As soon as he got up, he kind of looked out and said, what, what happened out there? You know, I would think before too long here, we'll see a shot one-on-one. -on -one. They have Dominic Lynch on the far sideline on a one-on-one -on -one matchup. He is their best receiver. They can't uh, believe that they'll wait too much longer before they try to take advantage of that uh, matchup out there. Yeah, trips out here to the left side. So if you run those two slot receivers in and Lynch out, well, they're going to run a little screen. So it looks like this was probably the play they were trying to set up the last time out. They decided to try to run it one more time. Also not successful as a no gain on second down, maybe a yard. So it's going to be third and long for the Indians with under two left to go here in the half. That's a good read by J.J. Spiker out there, one of the cornerbacks who came up. He didn't make the tackle, but what he did was slow things down for Lynch as he wasn't able to get anything going forward. So we've seen Bacon getting the job done on his legs. They haven't had him go to the air too often yet here in uh, this first half. We'll see if they want to take a shot with a minute 30 left to go. As it looks like they may call another timeout here, and they do, as Shawnee will take their second Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will step aside and be back. A minute 25 left to go in the half. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. It is third and long for the Indians coming out of the timeout as they are looking to try to extend this drive and try to get some points before halftime. Bacon looking to go deep, has to run out of trouble. Going to work that right side. A lot of green. Going to have to make a man miss. Spins, and he is going to get taken down, but there is a flag on the field. Looks like they're going to mark him short of the first down marker, but we'll see what the penalty is. Yeah, we'll get a look at the replay here. I didn't see a whole lot. Maybe a block in the back. It wasn't much contact with the referee right on top of it. Uh, it looked like one of the Indians players trailing that play may have gotten a little bit of the back of the jersey but we will wait as the officials get together and talk about it. They may want to decline this and just see if they can't get Shawnee to punt or are they going to make them replay the down. Be an interesting decline as Shawnee's doing a nice job running the football. It'd be a third and about, or sorry, a fourth and about two. They are going to take the penalty and it is from the spot. So they only end up going from third and 11 to about third and 13. So the only third, time will tell whether or not me. that penalty helped or hurt them as that would have brought up fourth and short. You've got to imagine that part of the field with how much time is left, they probably would have gone for it. But now as a minute left to go is approaching, we'll see what Shawnee wants to draw up. Play clock at 15, and Shawnee breaks the huddle. Well, we're still waiting for that deep ball to Lynch on the outside. Lida sagging back a little bit defensively. Bacon going to go wide. Looks deep, nothing there. Going to keep it himself. And he is going to be dropped after about a six-yard gain. As every time Bacon has looked like he wants to throw that ball deep on either side, he just hasn't had a lot of time, a lot of traffic back there. He's had to pull it down. We've seen him make some magic. But here in the uh, second quarter here as we near halftime, with that play, not as much luck. Yeah, and an interesting spot here for Shawnee. Fourth down, eight, but with not much time left and Elida not throwing the ball particularly well. I wondered if Shawnee might try to take a shot, but instead they're just going to go down to halftime. 
They're going to go to the locker room trailing by one. They do get the opening kickoff as we start the third quarter. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. It's halftime at Shawnee High School. Tonight's halftime adjustment is brought to you by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial needs. Visit yourstatebank.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter as the halftime show was underway by the Elida High School Band. And we take a look back at that first half on both sides. Evan, we started with very impressive drives out of both offenses. Um, took up almost half of the first quarter for Elida before they scored. Shawnee comes right back, eats up the rest of the first quarter, able to score um, just a little bit into that second quarter. Unfortunately, the extra point was no good. And that gives us our score of 7-6. to six. After those drives, the defenses really did a nice job of clamping down. They've made good adjustments. But we saw on both sides that these both these teams are going to have to tweak some things coming out of halftime. Yeah, maybe a few things, but I'll tell you what, both these teams playing pretty well. I mean, when you're giving up two or three yards per play, there's not much more you can ask of your team. But right now, Shawnee starting to get a little bit more momentum, starting to play a little bit better on offense. And defensively, they've made a couple good shifts as well. They're starting to put a couple more defensive backs back back deep so no one's going over or so Elida can't go over the top and so you know the adjustments like you said that they might be pretty minor but I think we're going to see a lot of the same stuff that we saw in the first half I think maybe Shawnee could use a couple more shots downfield Bacom has done a nice job with his feet but he hasn't really taken many chances and I think especially like on that last third down probably a good idea to instead of run a couple yards to just try to toss it up and see what happens so we'll have to see if Shawnee's passing game comes a Live. They did throw a lot more last week than they did or than they have so far today. And then if you look at Elida, they're going to have to get lower on their offensive and defensive line. I think the biggest issue that they're seeing so far is Shawnee's just had leverage and they've done a nice job either getting into the defensive or getting into the backfield defensively or pushing Elida back just far enough to allow their runners to get those three, four, five yard gains on the ground. Yeah, it's been a very competitive back and forth game before both of these teams. You know, I, I look for, like you said, both of these teams to come out and do a lot of what they did in the first half, but that big play potential on both sides is still there and looming large. Yeah, we haven't seen many of those either. Light has taken a couple shots, but Shawnee's able to, or has done a nice job making sure that they can't convert. And right now, Shawnee, again, just picking up those small chunks of yards. So we'll have to see if maybe they start to run the ball to the outside a little bit. We've seen a lot of stuff up the middle. Um, but you're absolutely right. At any point, we could see one of these teams break off a big, big play. Halftime is underway here at Shawnee High School. The Elida Band playing well, followed by the Shawnee Band. Uh, we'll step aside so we can uh, enjoy this halftime as well. When we return, we'll have the third quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Third quarter just about underway here at Shawnee High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter as Shawnee will receive the opening kick here the second half. We saw them start to get a drive going there towards the end of the second quarter, but it stalled out. So an opportunity here to begin the third quarter to come out and put some points on the board. Still haven't seen a big shot downfield by Shawnee yet. So I'm wondering if early on in this quarter they try a little play action and go over the top. But I'll tell you what, if they can continue to run the ball effectively and run some time off the clock and punch this into the end zone, it's going to be a really interesting second half. I mean, nonetheless, it's 7-6. We've got a great ball game on our hands, and it's exactly what the Indians needed we said it at the beginning of the broadcast, a tough loss last week. They need something to go their way, and so far tonight they've played well, but you got to take your hat off to Elida too. Their defense has played really well since that first drive, and you, you can't blame a team for giving up three- and four-yard runs. Like That's just it's, it's a tough thing to stop, and Shawnee sticking with their game plan, Elida doing the same on the other side of the ball. And, you know, as we talked about, we already had our, our halftime adjustments. But as you were talking about that, you know, thinking back on those drives that we saw and them giving up on both sides, just kind of those three, four-yard plays, you know, the one thing that both of these defenses really probably need to focus on is getting off the field on third down. We saw both teams able to convert numerous third downs to continue those drives when you need as a defense to stand tall and come up with a big stop. No question. And – we saw Shawnee force Elida into one of those third and longs, and that's really what both teams want to key on. If you're going to have a third down, you want it to be a passing situation. 
Another squib kick from Ulina ends up in the hands of Derek Lyons. Lyons had a big first half on the ground. And he continues just to go right through contact as he carries this one over the 35-yard line. And he will be down right around the 38-yard line, which is where the Indians will begin their first drive of the second half. And something else to watch here in the second half. Joel Stern did take his pads off here at halftime. He was injured in the first half. That's a starting safety for Shawnee, a team that already has some struggles in that defensive secondary. So it'll be interesting to see if Elida tries to pick on that secondary a little bit and pass the ball around some. You know, we also mentioned he's the starting punter for this team as Tyler Kimmett stepped in there in the first half, got the job done, but as we move on and if this stays close, if they go to rush the punter, whether or not that might come into play as well. Bacon in the shotgun here to start this third quarter. Lions gets stood up, changes direction, stays on his feet, trying to fight off another one. And that time, I think maybe just a little bit too much trying to keep that one alive as he's taken down for a big loss. Yeah, that's a good job by the defense of Elida getting into the backfield. They're not able to bring him down, but back there first was Parker Krim. We've seen him get into the backfield a few times, blowing that play up. And now Shawnee quickly back up to the line. They want to move a little quicker, according to some of the body language we're seeing. So Bacon waits for the snap. This time he's going to drop back. He's going to throw this one out far wide to Dominic Lynch. Lynch catches it, going to try to make a man miss. And as he gets up over the 45-yard line, that's where the Indians will have their third down. I'd like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Bankley Real Estate. Bankley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaign, and an extensive network that will get you the results that move you. It's a good little play right there. Get the ball to your athletic wide receiver. Let him make a man miss as a 10-yard pickup after losing four on the previous play. So it makes this third down much more manageable, third and three, instead of third and long. And the whole playbook open for Shawnee here as they go back under center in that I formation. Third and short for the Indians. Lyons bounces off some tackles and actually looks like he might have been stopped that time by his own player as Dominic Lynch was trying to set the block for him as Lyons ends up running into him to stop his momentum. Yeah, right there, really nothing going on the right side. They wanted to run right between the guard and the tackle on the right, but that hole got plugged up, and so Lynch had to bounce it to the outside, or the ball carrier, excuse me, had to bounce it to the outside, and Lyons just not able to get anything going around the edge. But he does pick up a yard. It becomes fourth and two, and with your punter out, you know, it's decision time, and it looks like they're going to keep the offensive unit out there in the I formation. Around midfield, wanting to take some of this momentum. They are going to go under center. Bacon takes the handoff. Lyons runs up. The extra effort, I think, got him there as he would look like he was going to be stopped initially, but continued to work as you take a look on the Lee's famous recipe chicken instant replay. Yeah, it was a good job filling the gap by Elida. 51, Aiden Daly got in there, but a nice job by Lyons just bouncing off of him and getting upfield for that extra yard. Gets right to the 50-yard line. They needed the 49, so a big Citizens National Bank first down, and Shawnee keeps the drive alive. That's a good job. Citizens National Bank is tonight's first down sponsor. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. So Shawnee with a fresh set of downs. Bacon under center one more time. Takes a snap. This time he's going to drop back, looking to go deep. Tries to throw it to where Lynch can run underneath it. Lots of contact as we're going to have multiple flags on the play as it looks like we're going to have pass interference on Elida, but we'll wait for the officials. It looks, you can see Walsh was hand fighting with Lynch that time. It looked like there was a lot of contact, and that is going to be another Citizens National Bank first down for the Indians. And that was that play action shot down the field that we kept talking about. And right there, you could see the cornerback was outmatched. He had to grab Lynch. Now, one thing at the end of that play that I noticed, Lynch kind of clapped in the defensive back's face, and one referee reached for his waistband but didn't pull out the flag. Instead, he went up to Lynch and had a quick word. Those are the kinds of things that you really want to stay away from. We've seen both teams with a 15-yard penalty. Derek Lyons going to push the pile. So the entire offense or defensive front of Elida was there. The Lions would not be denied as he has a big six-yard gain on first down. Good push right there from Lions. They go right up the middle this time. Lions having a nice night so far right there. David Edscorn making the tackle, a guy that really hasn't gotten a lot going on the offensive side for Elida. Rushed for 130 yards and three touchdowns last week. Just hasn't really been on the field much. 
Second and short for the Indians. Bacon in the shotgun. Going to be flanked by Christian Jones. Four wide receivers. Going to hand this one off to Jones. He's going to go to the left side. Fights out of one tackle. Has contact from two more. He's going to carry another defender as he gets across the 25-yard line. And this is going to be another Indian Citizen National Bank first down. And that's a small guy out there running the football, but he was able to carry two or three defenders with him to get those extra yards. You can see right here, it took four guys to bring down Ford, or Jones, excuse me, listed at 5'7", 160 pounds, so a lot of lower body strength right there and that extra fight to pick up the first down. Christian Jones has a game-breaking speed. And if they can get the ball to him in some open space, he can make guys miss. But as you saw there, not afraid of contact either as he picked up some tough extra yardage. And again, Shawnee going back under center. So switching up that formation quite a bit like we saw in the first half. You know, and as we talked about, really no reason to get away from what's working. They are running the ball right into the teeth of this Elida defense. They are wearing them down. They are picking up big yardage. We have seen a few more uh, passes here in this half. No completions, but it did lead to the big pass interference call, and that's what you want to do. You lean on that run game to open up the pass game. Shawnee has come out here in this second half doing exactly that. And controlling the clock. That's a big one, too, as we're almost halfway through this third quarter already on one possession. We only saw each team get one possession in the first quarter, so kind of looking at exactly how this game started. Elida trying to send Blitz a quick pass out to the far side. That's Michael Garlock with the catch as he is able to pick up about three or four yards there on second down to make it third and short. Good little quick hitter there. Elida blitzes up the middle, picked up nicely, and good job holding on to the ball by Garlock right there as he had a player come in and stick his hand on it. A little bit uh, slow to get that one going, but able to pick up some yardage. I don't know. He might get talked about that play <laughs> later on in tonight. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that, <laughs> Nate. Third and short for Shawnee. The Indians need a big third down. Lions with the carry. Bounces to his left, picks up yardage again, and he is picking up so much yardage after contact. That yak is going to be impressive tonight. Yeah, and something I'm noticing from Elida, especially on that play, is that they're not committing to the ball carrier. Shawnee's doing so many different things that Elida's secondary, so their, their cornerbacks, their safeties, and even their linebackers are a little bit timid trying to commit to one direction or another, and what that's doing is allowing that offensive line to get a push and allowing the runner to bounce out side and get upfield for the first. So Shawnee is in the eye sign of Lima and Delphus red zone for the first time here in the quarter. Bacon going to go deep, looks to air it out. He has a lot of traffic back there and a big sack uh, by number 50 of Elida Parker Krim gets the first sack for the Bulldogs. Yeah, okay, maybe a little miscommunication up front for Shawnee right there as one guy thought the other was supposed to have him and vice versa, and Krim just able to get right between the offensive line and make a nice sack in the backfield. So a big loss, looks like about eight or nine yards, brings up a big second down. And that's exactly what Elida needed as Shawnee had all the momentum here. They needed a big play to push him back behind schedule. Second and 18. Bacon under center. Going to be a reverse. This one to Jones. Jones with lots of space. Good block on that far side. Jones going to cut back in as Krim is right there to clean it up. And they're going to say they stopped him inbound, so the clock will continue to run. There's a hold on this play that doesn't get called, as you see right there. Dominic Lynch on the outside grabbed that shoulder of the off, or the defender and took him down right in front of the referee. You could see the Elida sideline get a little fired up about that, but doesn't get the call, so it ends up going for a few yards. It's still a big third down and a lot of work to do for the Indians. Yeah, and I think what may have helped the Shawnee at that time is that the play was happening just in front of that, so the official had his eyes on the ball carrier that time. So Shawnee with the fortunate break that time, Third and long. You got to think Shawnee is probably thinking two down territory. Kimmett does have a great leg on him as they do have a kicker who could make this, but you would think Shawnee's looking for that six instead of the three. We are going to have the first timeout of the half. This one's going to be by Shawnee. They'll take the Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Instant Replay is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. 
So Shawnee takes a timeout prior to the third down and long as they are in the eyesight of Lima and Delphi's red zone. 4.43 left to go here in the third, the opening possession for either team as Shawnee has had a nice extended drive. Pass right up the middle to Jones and just out of reach as Christian Jones not able to gather that one up. A great play call that time by Shawnee, but they missed that touchdown by just that much. Yeah, and this is a great pass right there from Caleb Bacombe, and just right through the hands of his target, maybe a little bit over his head, but when you're running a slant route like that and a quick pass, you gotta be ready to catch the ball. That's a tough drop, and now we're gonna see a field goal attempt from about 30, what do they got, 34 yards. Tyler Kimmett, the senior kicker for the Indians, has plenty of leg to make this one. He has already missed a extra point here this evening. But Shawnee going for the lead here with 439 left to go in the third quarter. Kimmett's kick is up, and it is good. Shawnee takes the lead for the first time tonight. They lead Elida 9-7. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back, John Stocker, DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. The Shawnee Indians go on a long opening drive here of the third quarter, eat up lots of clock as they finish the drive with a field goal to take the lead nine to seven. 4.35 left to go here in the third as Elida gets ready for their first offensive possession. And what an incredible job controlling time of possession for Shawnee coming out running the clock all the way down to 435. And the way Elida plays, I'd imagine, as long as they do exactly what we saw in the first half, that they're going to have the ball until the end of the third quarter. So not a whole lot of possessions for each team. And what does that mean, Nate? It means you can't make mistakes. Absolutely. You have to make these count. Long kickoff for the Indians, taken down at the two-yard line. Here's Ed Scorn working through some traffic. He's going to be met by a whole host of Indians and taken down right around the 35-yard line. It's a good return there for Edscorn. He had to make a couple guys miss at the 15-yard line, able to get right between them and get a couple extra yards. So they'll start this drive from about the 26-yard line. Looks like they'll put him down, yep, right on the 26. So quarterback Ryan Magoo will lead his team out for their first possession here of the half. We saw the running back David Edscorn do most of the heavy lifting for the Bulldogs. He had a lot of success. It was mainly penalties that killed a lot of those Bulldog drives. Yeah, it was, and, you know, they really don't have to change anything here. You're only down two. Your kicker can make a field goal as well, so they can keep the ball on the ground. But right there, trying to get it to the outside, Shawnee doing a nice job staying home. Yeah, they tried to stretch the defense on that play, as you can see on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken instant replay, but Amari Walsh with nowhere to go. That's going to lead to a second and nine. Another thing that these running plays and these heavy running attacks by both teams do is it keeps it keeps this clock moving. We saw the very fast first quarter and this third quarter moving as well. Swing pass out to Etzcorn. Etzcorn catches it with some space as he has a nice tackle after a nice gain as well. And that's going to bring up third and short for the Bulldogs. Nice tackle there by Joey Spiker, but a good play there by Elida. Just getting a little swing pass out to your best runner. Let him have some space. He gets upfield. It's a nice pickup, third and much more manageable. So Ed Scorn, I wonder if he's a little shaken up on that play as he's going to go off on the sidelines here on this third and short. It's a little bit of a surprise to see as he's usually the back you'd want carrying the ball here in this spot. Yeah, so Cameron Kaufman comes into the backfield. He had eight carries for 84 yards last week against Toledo Rogers. So we'll see what Elina wants to do here. If they're going to try to keep it on the ground, let Magoo pick it up, try to get it into the tailback. And they do a great push by that defensive front of Shawnee. A drop of a two-yard loss. And that is going to bring up fourth down deep into Elida territory where you would think that would bring up a punt situation for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's a really nice job firing out from Shawnee. Now, one thing you might want to watch for next time Elida has the football is the hard count because Shawnee is timing up that count really nicely, able to get low, get into the backfield, and bring down the ball carrier. So they're forcing a punt here from Elida. And if they can score and convert that PAT, they're going to be up by two scores, so this could be a really big drive for Shawnee. So it looked like for a second there, Elida talked about it but decided against going for it. They are in punt formation. That's Gorn and Spiker back for the return. This one off the side of the foot. 
as it's traveling towards the sideline, takes in a line of bounds and goes out of bounds right around the Shawnee 42-yard line. Shawnee able to run a ton of time off the clock on their last possession, so I have to imagine they're going to keep the ball on the ground, keep things simple here. Again, if they can play mistake-free football, run a lot of time off this clock, even if they don't score, they're going to put a lot of pressure on a team that doesn't necessarily pass the ball very well. You know, you've been around football a lot. You know, we've seen a lot of games. We've had been fortunate to call a lot. We know what they should do here, but how tempting is it if you're sitting on that Shawnee sideline to take that shot and seize this momentum? You know, I was thinking about that as well. It's one, one spot where you don't expect the ball to go over the top if you're the defense, so you might see them fall asleep. They are going to start here in shotgun. Bacon is going to hand it off to Lyons. He's going to go right up the middle. Another big down, uh, gain on first down as it looked like towards this near sideline. There might have been a little bit of holding, a little bit of interference, but either way, a good gain for Lions on first down. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and an extensive network that, get, that will get you the results that move you. Now right here, if they run that same formation, watch for a fake and a quick pass out to Lynch because on that last play, the defensive back over on the left side, Amari Wash, really bit hard on the handoff. So if he bites, now oh, this time Shawnee is going to jump. So that's tough as they lose a couple of those yards. But again, Wash was reading the run, ran in, and as soon as he did, Dominic Lynch turned to the sideline to the offensive coordinator, Phil Martino, and said exactly that, right? Fake the handoff, throw one out to me because my defender is going inside. So that's what you saw. All I saw was I saw Dominic Lynch turning over to the sideline. Oh, yeah. The official looking like, hey, where was the call? Like maybe he had been grabbed, but instead it was him trying to get them to recognize, hey, they're, they're going in on that run. Let's try something, uh, play action pass here. There's a safety over the top though. We'll see what happens. Bacon is going to go Lynch's way. Fires underneath. Nice catch and grab for Dominic Lynch to make this a third and manageable. And that play is possible because Elida really respecting the athleticism of Lynch. They're playing back about five or six yards. And so as soon as Lynch sprints up the field, they take a couple steps back and he just comes right back to the ball and he's wide open. Dominic Lynch, the senior, a tremendous athlete for this Indians team. They're going to need him all year long. He is their leader. Their best receiver as well. He was the quarterback last year before an injury abruptly ended his season, moving out to wide receiver this year. Bacon in the shotgun, third and short. Joined in the backfield by Lines. He's going to take the handoff, going to go right up the middle, fighting through some traffic, and he picks up another Citizens National Bank first down. Been so impressed by Lions and how hard he's running. He gets the ball. He sees a hole. You can see him looking at the line. As soon as he sees the hole, he digs that foot into the ground, gets up into it, gets into the second level, gets a first down. This clock will continue to tick, and I don't think Shawnee's going to have to run another play here in the third quarter. 18 seconds left to go here in the quarter, and the play clock is at 17 so they can let this one continue to tick down and go to the quarter change Shawnee it's been all Shawnee here in this third quarter a very long drive to open the quarter led to three points and the lead they quickly put Elida on a three and out they get the ball right back and they are driving once again we're going to step aside and we'll be back with the fourth quarter here on WOSN Welcome back. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. As Caleb Bacon opens the fourth quarter with a pass to Michael Garlock as he picks up good yardage on first down. Yeah, I like those quick hitter passes, right? That's a nice little pass out to the left side. Just a quick slant route and again this is made possible by Elida giving so much space to those receivers you run that slant route you get inside of the receiver it's a quick easy catch you're brought down right away but that's a easy five yard pickup they go four wide one more time three on the far sideline one on the near sideline make them in the shotgun second and five for the Indians He's going to hand this one off to Lyons. He spins out of trouble right into the arms of Krim and then carries Krim and another Bulldog defender. Another three yards as Derek Lyons right now is just leveling up and just carrying Bulldog defenders wherever he goes. Yeah, that's an unbelievable run right there. Hit in the backfield, avoids two tacklers, carries two more a couple yards forward for that third and short. He's been fantastic, and we're going to have a Stolle Hustle Award later on in this game, and he's certainly a candidate for that, so stay tuned after the game for the Stolle Insurance Hustle Award. 
So another third down for the Indians. They have been very good on third down so far tonight. Bacon under center. Lions going to follow his lead blocker. And right now, Shawnee not doing anything fancy. They're going right at Elida, picking up three or four yards a game. And you know what? There's no reason to do anything else. It's working. It's, don't, it's not broke, so don't try to fix it. And you know, you, you hear all the time about running backs taking their offensive line out to eat. Now, I'll tell you what, the offensive line has played well, but I think they need to treat Lions to a meal because he is finding the door cracked open and he's able to get through it all night long. He's done such a nice job with very little space. Again, offensive line is doing their job. They're standing up that defensive line. They're doing a nice job, but they're making things happen. Uh, the runners are making things happen. Excuse me. Shawnee tries to overload that left side. Lions was hit in the backfield, had to spin out of trouble and still made positive yardage. Yeah, right there, good penetration. Once again, you saw on the Lee's replay, Travis Adkins getting in the backfield. He's another guy with nice size, 6'5", 225, but not able to wrap Lions up. So a two-yard gain on first down. Lions actually coming out of the game here for this play. You see Christian Jones in the backfield. He's back there along with Joey Spiker, who now goes out wide. And usually you see Jones running to the outside if he gets the ball. Bacon, he's going to roll, looking for Lynch. He's going to be tracked down, gets rid of it out of the pocket, plenty enough downfield. Down and I'll tell you what, you're not going to pick up any yards. It's not going to show up in the stat book as anything other than an incompletion. But that is a veteran heads-up play from a young quarterback. Yeah, that's a really nice job. Now, they had that play set up nicely. They had Lynch run inside, then go out toward the corner. But just not enough time for Bacon to get that ball away. So he just threw it. And they have a third and eight instead of a third and 16. So another third down faces the Indians. Mayan's still out of the game here. Jones in the backfield with Bacon. He has four receivers. He's going to go to the air. Going to throw it to Garlock, and it's behind him. And a little miscommunication on that play. He's going to bring up fourth down for the Indians. Bacon looks towards the sideline, says that one was on him. As it looked like the receiver was, receivers are on the right play, but sometimes when you get in this early season, quarterback and receivers are still trying to figure some things out. And it looks like Shawnee is looking like they're going to go for it, but now they're going to bring out the punt unit. Yeah, it's one of those awkward spots to punt, but in a close game like this and a team that likes to run the football going up against them, you just want to win that field position battle. So they're going to run the punter. Kimmett out there, again, backup punter, but we saw him have a nice end over end kick inside the 10 yard line. And now a timeout. Shawnee's going to take their second timeout here with 9-11 to go. So there's another Metzger Financial Services timeout on the field. We're going to take one as well and step aside. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Extra Point sponsors T&D Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit T&D Interiors on Allentown Road. So in the timeout, Shawnee changes their mind. They're going to come out four wide receivers, and they're going to go for it here on fourth down on their own side of the field. Lions in the game, lined up to the right. See what the Indians have drawn up. Bacon going to drop back. He's going to let this one go deep. He has a receiver wide open and just out of the reach of Michael Garlock. He had to twist, as you see on this instant replay, and he couldn't quite bring it in as it was in his hands. And that's a really, really tough play for a receiver. You're looking over the inside shoulder, have to adjust, take your eyes off the ball to look back over your left, reach out. It was a, a tough, tough play right there. I'm sure a father would say you need to bring that in, but I'll give him credit. That's a tough play. Got his hands on the ball. But either way, 9.05 on the clock here, and they just need to come up with a big stop defensively. Shawnee with an opportunity there. A tough play for the receiver. Made a good effort at it, but just couldn't quite bring it in. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. See Bacon and Garlock on the sideline getting together, talking about it, saying, hey, it's all right. We'll get the next one. They know their defense has been playing well tonight. They're going to give them another chance. This one's going to be a swing play out to Etzcorn. He's going to be chased by several Indian defenders. So I'll tell you what, that linebacking core of Shawnee has been on it tonight. 
Yeah, that was a good job sniffing that out from the start. It looked like man-to-man -man coverage and, and 56. That is Drew Isley. He read that play. He stayed with Ed's corner. He ran out to the right side and was able to bring him down for just a two-yard gain. Second and short for the Bulldogs. They're down 9-7 here in the fourth quarter. Clock's running. Magoo, five wide receivers, empty backfield. Going to throw this one out quickly. Shawnee all over that one. A great. Out. The ball is loose, and Shawnee is going to fall on it for a turnover. A huge turnover for the Indians as the Bulldogs looked like they were going to have that one secured, but they continued as that one's going to come free, and who fell on that one? I couldn't quite see on the instant replay. It is going to be number 18. That is Dalton Hobson, the sophomore, right there to fall on that one, and Shawnee immediately gets another opportunity. That was a really nice job right there. That fumble was made possible by the defender getting in there right before they, right when they caught the ball, and so as he caught the ball, he was pushed back. He didn't have a chance to tuck it in. So it's still a catch. He gets possession, but he's hit so quickly that he's not able to get that ball down into a secure position, and it's knocked out by Shawnee and picked back up. And now the referees are having a chat because I think it's going to be what you, yeah. probably exactly what we were saying. Was he able to make a football move and really secure the football? I say, and again, I'm not the referee. My, what I say doesn't actually matter, but. Maybe we can take a look at that instant replay one more time. They're getting together trying to decide if this was a catch or not. They don't have the benefit of instant replay like we do. And it looked like he caught it, but it may have been moving around. It, you're not 100% sure. I don't know if you can overturn this one or not, but I like the fact that the officials are getting together. They're going to talk about it, and whether they keep it or they um, overrule this one and give it back to Elida, you know, this is what you want. You want your crews to get together, and you want them to at least come to a consensus. You do. I mean, the, normally in a play like this, when you can't watch it again, you kind of have to go with what you called initially, right? You don't have the benefit of replay like you just said, and they are walking the ball back to the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to call this incomplete. I think you might be right. They're over talking to the Shawnee staff. You can tell by the body language of some of the coaches. Shawnee not happy about this call. But it does look like the defense of the Indians is coming back out. And Elida is going to get the benefit of this call. The officials are still having a conversation. You see head coach Mike Lewis, offensive coordinator Phil Martino, right in the middle of that conversation as well. Trying to plead their case. We're going to take a look at the replay one more time. And you know what? His arms are moving, but it looks like he's got that ball secured. That's a tough call for the officials to make. It really is. And and they're still they're still chatting it over. We still don't really have a definitive call. We have one referee standing where the ball was, but I think they're going to give it back to Elida here. That's that's the way it looks anyway. The chains aren't moving yet. And if you're a Shawnee fan, you're not happy about this call. If you're Elida, you love it. But I can tell you this as, you know, broadcasters and quote-unquote neutral third parties, you know, this is how calls should go. Whether it's right or it's wrong can be debated all day long. But what you want is you want your officiating crew to get together. You want them to talk about it. You want them to make these decisions not based off of anything other than what they believe as a crew they saw. Yeah, absolutely. Shawnee defense is out there on the field. So, the, the thing that I don't quite understand was, are they t are they saying that he was down before the ball came out? And that might be because now you see the down marker going backwards. So I think they're going to say that it's going to be a light of ball. He was down by contact prior to the ball coming out. So it's going to be third and long for Elida. So if you're Shawnee, obviously you much prefer having the football. But if you, the call is going to get overturned, this is best-case scenario as it's going to be third and long for the Bulldogs. Yeah, absolutely, and, and it's a tough call. Again, it's tough for the referees. It's tough for us to watch it up here and make a call, so I can't imagine being down there and trying to make sure you're making the right call. And fans need to understand, referees aren't rooting for one team or another, right? They're trying. You already said it. They're trying to make the call that they think is the right call on the field, so it will be a lot of ball. 
third and deep. So we'll have to see what happens here. Have to imagine they're going to take a shot. The Shawnee defensive secondary is going to be tested. Three deep for Shawnee. Magoo is going to roll to his right. He's going to look to go long. Turns, pumps once, pumps twice. Going to go out of bounds. And it is going to be fourth and long for the Bulldogs as the Shawnee defense comes in and they stand tall on third down. Yeah, that time looked like they were running a zone defense and there really wasn't anywhere to go. Elida's trying to run a levels play and have a receiver about 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, 15 and 20. And Shawnee had a man in between the quarterback and the receiver on each level. So really nice job calling that zone defense, making the stop right there. And now they'll get the ball back. And I am sure we're going to have lots of fans on both sides watching that Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken instant replay, dissecting, trying to decide what the right call was. Good luck, but luckily for us, we do have that instant replay. Thankfully, we have Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken on our side. That punt is going to take a bounce. It's going to get picked up late by Spiker before he gets forced out of bounds. And we have a penalty flag down. I'm not sure what this one is going to be on. Well, I think he called a fair catch, and then he picked the ball up and went. I'm not sure if after the ball hits the ground, if it becomes, or if the fair catch gets waved off. I would imagine since the flag is down, that you are not allowed to pick the ball up off the ground and run it if you call a fair catch either. The referee... Making the call, and it is going to be an illegal fair catch call as that is exactly what happened. He made the fair catch call and tried to advance the ball. Can't do that, so it's going to back up the Indians a little bit more here with 740 left to go in the game. But it's still first and 10. It doesn't become first and 15 or 20. And so what that does is gives Shawnee more space to run the ball up the field and run the clock down like they've done so well here in this game. Yeah, if you're going to have a penalty, that's one of those you know ones that you have to look at as a little bit harmless. Yeah, it does drive you a little deeper back into your own territory. However, you don't have to worry about getting more than 10 yards here on this set of downs. Three wide, four wide receivers, excuse me, for Shawnee as Bacon is back in the shotgun. Derek Lyons to his right. He's going to drop back and throw. They're going to go deep to the opposite side. This one's going to be up for grabs just out of the reach of both Wash and Lynch. As that was the first time they've really tried to challenge outside of the pass interference call um, Wash when he has had help. That one's going to fall incomplete to bring up second and ten, but it does stop the clock as you have this two-point lead. It's a shot right there that, you know, on first down, no one's really expecting it. I wasn't expecting it. I don't think you were, and they were trying to catch Elida off guard. Now there are seven and a half minutes left. So you take a shot like that, you still have some time to work with, and it's second down ten. Yeah, the clock stopped, but you can keep it on the ground here. Now they are going to do that as Lyons is going to take the ball, going to work up through the lines, bounces off to the right, fights through some more tackles as Derek Lyons just continues to fight through tackle after tackle. His yards after uh, uh, yards after contact is just, I mean, it's almost got to be a 2-to-1, 3-to-1 ratio at this point. Yeah, absolutely. He's been met in the backfield most of his carries, but he has done such a nice job keeping his feet moving and getting up the field. So now third down and three to go, and he's picked up probably three and a half or four yards per carry, so I imagine they go right back to him here. That was a big second down as this makes it third and manageable after the incompletion on first down. They have Garlock out wide here on the near side. Lynch is out wide on the far side. They could also run that slant inside. Here's Lions. They just continue to try to go for what has worked for them. This is going to bring up fourth and one and a very interesting call. You're on the 41-yard line. You are close to midfield. Your defense has been doing well. You could risk it. Say, hey, we've been picking up more than one yard for the most of the night tonight. Maybe you try to hard count it. Pick up this first down to continue letting the clock run. But Shawnee is going to play it safe as Kimmett is going to come out for the punt. Theoretically, you could hard count it, but you only have one timeout left, right? And so if you hard count, draw the clock all the way or the play clock down, you call that last timeout. If you lie to scores, you're all out of those timeouts. So probably a good idea here just to send the punting unit on. Three seconds on the play clock. They're going to have to snap the ball. Now it's down to zero, and now they're just going to take the penalty. I don't know that that was necessarily the plan, but if you were going to punt on fourth down, 
Another five yards, probably not going to hurt you anyway. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaign, and an extensive network that will get you results that move you. 5.58 left to go here in the game. Shawnee on top, 9-7. to seven. The offenses have at times looked like they've been able to move at will. We have a block punt. Shawnee going to rush down and fall on it, and a huge play for the Bulldogs. We talked about this coming out of halftime. Their starting punter, Joel Stern, hurt towards the end of that first half. We wondered how that might come into play if this game got close towards the end and it was a block punt situation. I don't know that any of that was on Kimmett as Elida went right through that line and was on him very quickly. Yeah, the only thing that you could blame them for perhaps is the snap was a little bit slow, right? And Kimmett a little bit slow to drop the ball onto his foot. Elida did a great job getting through there. And uh, let's see, was that number 91 with the block right there? I couldn't see the number, but either way, a really nice job getting through the line. I think you just have to speed up that snap. That's tough, though, in a situation like this because a lot of times a guy gets a little bit nervous late in the game snapping the ball that hard. So it's just a tough play overall, and now Elida with a really good chance here. So now the Indian defense needs to stand tall. They are trying to protect this two-point lead as Adscorn. Changes directions, bounce off the left side, and has the most room that he's had to run here in this entire second half. Yeah, I was going to say that as well. That's a good call. He really hasn't gotten forward too much tonight. That time bouncing it to the outside, getting up the outs outside, excuse me, and picking up six. Second and four as Elida is in the eyesight of Lima and Delphi's red zone for the first time here in the half. They are looking to punch it in for six. At the very least, you know that they want to come away with those three points in the lead. Second and four at Scorn. Going to work off the right side. Has a hole. Is able to pick up another three yards. Going to make this third and short. Good look at the replay here. Had a nice hole, but a good job by the linebacker for Shawnee. That was Drew Isley once again coming up and dropping him before he can get that first down. So a big third coming up. And I'd be curious if they don't get this. Obviously some work to do, but if they don't get this, are they going to trot the kicker out there? Or are they going to go for it? How much faith do you have in that guy? Yeah, and I haven't seen Elida or their kicker. Wasn't uh, seeing him during warm up so not quite sure where the range is, what they're comfortable with out of him. Obviously, the field goal will get you the lead as this clock is winding down. Under 4.30 left to go. Elida looks like they're going to take their first timeout of the half, and they are. So that is another Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. John Stockter, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for the high school sports fan. A big third down for the Bulldogs as they are just outside the five-yard line. They take the timeout as they know this is a big one. Magoo in the shotgun with Edscorn behind him. Shawnee has gotten some stops tonight when they needed to in short yardage. Can they do it again? And no. Ed Scorn able to pick up the Citizens National Bank first down as he is down on the four-yard line for first and goal, Elida. Shawnee sent Garrett Looney up the left side. He blitzed. He got right through the defensive line, but the play was going right up the middle. He blitzed the four gap. They went through the two, and they were able to pick up that first. If they tried to run that play to the outside, that would have been dropped dead by Looney. Good job by Elida running the ball hard up the middle. Now five yards from Paydirt and a lead in this game. And Shawnee, just one timeout remaining. They have four downs to score as they are milking precious clock. Wash going to stretch this one out as he reaches for the pylon and gets in. Touchdown, Elida. Elida with a Fat Jacks touchdown to take the lead, 13-9. to nine. Amari Wash, they have ran that play multiple times today, and Shawnee has been able to stop it for short yardage until it mattered most as Wash gets across the goal line. And it's a good job by Wash using that speed to get to the outside, but a really nice job by David Etzcorn on the outside, making a nice block, holding his block long enough for Wash to get out there and reach across the pylon. So... Ethan Ramsdale comes out for the extra point as it looks like actually Elida's going to go for two here. They do that. The touchdown by Shawnee would only tie it. They'd have to have the extra point, which they've already missed. So no harm, no foul here. You go for it. 
McHugh's going to drop back, going to throw it out to the flat, and the ball is dropped by Etzcorn as he took his eyes off of it for just a second to see where the defense was coming, and it falls to the turf to make this a 13-9 game. 3.48 left to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. 348 left to go in the game. Elida coming off a big Amari Walsh touchdown. Have the lead 13 to 9 as they are about to kick it off to Shawnee. It'll be interesting to see here as Elida so far on their kickoffs have chosen to squib kick it, which has given Shawnee some pretty decent field position each time. Be interested if they continue with that strategy or they try to kick this one deep. Yeah, certainly. And it, it will also be interesting to see. If they do squib it, but it gets far enough back, is Shawnee going to try to catch it on the run and get some extra yards out of it? A lot of weird things could happen here. And they do squib it, keeping it on the ground. It's going to be picked up by Shawnee, and he is going to be dropped at the 38-yard line. So good field position for the Indians as they come onto the field, having to come away with a touchdown here with 3.44 left to go. One timeout left, a team that hasn't passed the ball particularly well, but they haven't really tried to pass the ball a whole lot. When they have tried to pass, it's mostly been deep passes over the top. So we might see a little bit of that passing game here and see what this quarterback, Bacon, is made of. They have yet to be able to connect on the deep ball. Two tries to Dominic Lynch. One was a pass interference, one was out of his reach, and then one that Garlock just couldn't bring in. It came off his fingertips. We'll see what they're able to do here on first down. Nice catch and a nice pass, but an even better catch by Lynch as he held on to that one right as the Bulldog defender was getting at it. A strong grab to keep that one away from Walsh, and that results in a Citizens National Bank first down. Clock stopped momentarily as they reset the chains. So three and a half and ticking, but a nice first play for Shawnee. They're already down into Elida territory. If you're Shawnee, too, you got to be thinking you're not really worried about trying to milk a lot of clock as you feel like you probably – can help um, or you can stop Elida in the air if necessary. Bacon, we haven't seen this too much out of him in the second half as he keeps that one himself, picks up about three yards. It's all right, they just need to get back to the line of scrimmage quickly here. Elida not in any hurry to get up. They are fine with letting this clock run as we hit the three minute to go mark. They continue with the four wide receiver set, Bacon in the backfield, joined by Derek Lyons. Lyons has had a huge game for the Indians. Bacon, he's going to drop back. Going to look to throw it deep. Decides to pull it down. He's chased. He tries to get it out. We'll see what they say, and they're going to say incomplete pass. That was a dangerous pass, as you're going to see on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Instant Replay. Bacon going to roll, but he has a Bulldog defender right on him and just gets rid of it looking for Lynch, who was on the comeback that time. Yeah, nice job getting rid of the ball, but like you said, super dangerous when you've got a player holding on to you and you reach that ball back. It's really tough to maintain control and be able to bring that arm forward for a forward pass. But nonetheless, the clock stops, 238, third down. You're certainly going to go for it on fourth if you need to. So two plays to work with. Yeah, you don't have to get it all right here, but you're looking for some positive yardage. Bacon going to drop back, going to roll to his right. Going to let this one go. Throws it up, and it is almost picked off. And that, and we'll take a look at this instant replay. It looked like it was just out of the reach of the Bulldog player. Lynch almost able to grab it and then almost intercepted. And that's exactly what happened. Off the fingertips of Edscorn, that redirected it enough where Lynch couldn't gather it in, and then a Bulldog defender comes flying in from behind, almost able to pick that one off. Now this will get interesting because Shawnee has called a timeout on most important plays, and now they're going to use their last timeout with the clock stopped at 2.33. So that's it for timeouts for Shawnee. It's fourth down here coming up. They're going to try to draw up a play, figure out what to do to get that first down, but then they're going to have to keep going because no timeouts remaining. Tonight's instant, or excuse me, tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. You know, it, they are out of timeouts, but it's probably a good one to call because you have to pick up this fourth down. You don't have enough if you turn it over to stop the clock anyway. You want to get this play right. If you pick up the first down, you continue to go. If you don't, game's over. Yeah, no question. You definitely want to make sure your team's on the same page. It's a 
a young team with a new coach. And, you know, sometimes you just have to call that timeout, get together, and make sure that everyone knows what they're doing. That was one of our keys to the game, right? Know, the, know your role, and no time more important for that than right here. It has been an extremely competitive game from the very beginning, and it may come down to this final play. Can the Bulldog defense hold strong? Can the Shawnee offense cash in? Bacon, he's going to drop back, looking to air it out. Here comes the blitz over the middle. It is caught as he takes a huge hit. What a great jump that time. And it looks like that is Spiker. He got hit hard from behind. No. That's a tough one to hold on to. Actually, that was Lyons. Derek Lyons, as he comes from the backfield, goes out. He takes a huge hit, holds on to that one. We saw him get it done on the ground and now in the air. And that gives Shawnee new life. Yeah, that's such a big play. That's clutch right there. You see once again on that Lee's replay, he catches it and gets hit immediately from behind by Seth Sharp. But a big first down. 2.05 left to go here. Bacon, he's going to take the shotgun snap, going to look to throw it out one more time. And this one just out of the reach of Wash as it looked like I thought from the moment he let that one go that this one was going to be picked off. Yeah, Wash read that all the way, as did David Edscorn. Both of them made a nice jump on that ball. But when you see that as a coach, sometimes you start to think a little hitch and go could work if that def defense is jumping those passes. So we'll see what happens and what Coach Martino draws up, the offensive coordinator. 15 seconds left to go on the play clock as the game clock is stopped at 158. Shawnee going to have to hurry here to the line. Just six, three, two. Just get the snap off. Bacon going to go air it out. Going to throw it deep. This one to Garlock. He has to redirect. There's the flag. pass interference. A great job by Michael Garlock to recognize that that one was going to get underthrown, have to change directions. Bacon, you see, took a huge hit. And I don't think that the cornerback number seven from Elida, as that is Jackson Kovalt, realized that that one was in the air as he saw Garlock redirect. Got a hold of him just enough. Tried to throw his hands up at the last minute, but it was too late, and a huge penalty goes the Indians' way. It's a free first down. That's free 15. The ball up to the 15-yard line. It's a 153 on the clock. Shawnee could consider going back to that run game for a play or two if they really wanted to. They have put the ball in Bacom's hands here late in the fourth. Told the young man to go out there and lead his team. So far, he has got them down to the 15-yard line and inside the eyesight of Lima and Delphus red zone. This is going to be a handoff to Lions as he goes off that right side. He's going to be met by a host of Bulldogs after about a three-yard gain to bring up second and seven. The clock continues to run, 1.45 left to go. Yeah, good job that time by Elida filling that gap. That was Etzcorn that stepped up and filled the hole to make sure that there was no space for Lions to get through. Ends up being still a two or three yard gain. Clock ticking down to 130. Dominic Lynch out far with the one-on-one -on, -one on Walsh. Three wide receivers on the near sideline. This could be a nice time for a fade to Lynch too. There it That's is. where they're going to go. Lynch in the end zone, and a great job by Amari Walsh to break that up. He just read Lynch's eyes, put his hands up right at the right time to knock that one away. That was a tremendous defensive play by Amari. It really was. He stayed with Lynch. I think he thought the same thing we did up here. This is probably a good time for a fade. Lynch came inside first, then cut out to the corner, and Walsh stayed with him the whole way and was able to knock that ball down. So Shawnee facing another third down. They can pick up a first down if they can get inside the five-yard line. Obviously, with a minute 12 left to go, they're looking towards the end zone. And Elida is going to call the time. I think the official just motioned the wrong way, as it is going to be Elida with the timeout. Elida takes the Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Minute 12 left to go in the game. Shawnee inside the eyesight of Lima and Delphus red zone. They face another big third down, third and eight. They can pick up the first down. They got to get down to the five-yard line, though. 
Coming out of the timeout, Bacon in the shotgun, takes the snap, it's gonna go to the air. Tries to fit it in through a tight window. This one's gonna be picked off. He lined it with an opportunity to go all the way. And he is, it is gonna be a pick six for the Bulldogs. What a nice job jumping that pass right there. That's David Etzcorn. We've seen him a couple times make a really nice read. And that time he jumped right in front of the receiver, grabbed that ball. What a great defensive play. And that's one of those explosive plays. We haven't seen one all day. And then Etzcorn jumps in front of it. Last week getting the job done on the ground. This week getting the job done on defense. What a fantastic job by him. And when you take a look at that Lee's famous recipe, chicken instant replay, it almost looks like at the last minute, Bacom saw the, uh, the defender coming through to tr try to hold back on that pass as it looked like it was going to go towards the ground before Escorn comes through and picks that one off. But that one is most likely going to seal it as let's see what we have as the score hasn't changed up on the scoreboard. I didn't see a penalty flag. They're saying that he was either down or went out of bounds. They placed the ball down at the 38 yard line. So the touchdown won't stand. The thing is, there's only 55 seconds on the clock. Shawnee with no timeouts left. Yeah, Eli, all they're gonna have to do is come out and kneel on this one to take this one away. And it has been a tremendous uh, game from the very beginning. And we will talk more about it in our uh, State Bank post game. But man, what a heartbreaking one for Shawnee as they let that one go in the shadow of the end zone. For Elida, though, a thrilling victory as they come up with a huge defensive stand. Elida will take a knee. They'll have to do it one more time and a big week two win. Hey, Elida's going to move to 2-0. and oh. That's a great start for the Bulldogs. Shawnee will fall to 0-2. That's tough, but a game that went a lot better than the game last week. And so Shawnee, even though they, they're going to come away with a loss here, there's a lot of good that we saw here tonight. Hey, and I'll tell you what, you know, we obviously don't have any finals. When everybody's watching this, they'll already know some scores. But looking at the WSN app, the Western Buckeye League is a little topsy-turvy right now from what a lot of people thought it might be. So yeah. Elida coming away with this victory is huge in the conference standings. We'll talk more about that in the State Bank postgame as Elida is going to move to 2-0 on the season, 1-0 in the Western Buckeye League. They're going to defeat Shawnee 13-9. We'll step aside and be back to talk about it on WOSN. Welcome back to Shawnee High School. Tonight's postgame sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter. And Evan, a tremendous game really from the start. The offenses, they had long, sustained drives. The defenses held when they needed to. You saw some big plays out of both sides. We saw some near misses out of both sides. But when it was all said and done, it was the block punt that by Elida that was really the game changer. Yeah, and we talked before the game about explosive plays. And we really didn't see too many of those until the very end of the game when there was that blocked punt, like you said. And then that interception by David Etzcorn to really put a nail in the cough and a tremendous job by both teams I mean this is going to be a this, this is going to be a tough game to recover from no matter which side you're on there were a lot of hard hits there was a lot of great defense played and ultimately it was defense that won this game it's time to look at tonight's Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page and we had some conversations we had some plays out of both sides we had some people that stepped up but really when it was all said and done David Escorn on the ground David Escorn in the air and David Escorn with the game ceiling interception yeah I'll tell you what he got it done in multiple aspects like you said and last week we saw him go for 130 yards and three touchdowns on the ground not as impressive today but Shawnee's defense played really well as well but Etzcorn ultimately coming up with that big pick to end the game and honestly in the last couple drives on defense he did a nice job making some key tackles plugging some holes and really slowing down this Shawnee rushing attack that had a pretty good game ultimately so week two comes to a close Elida moves to 2-0 and and 1-0 and in the Western Buckeye League in what looks like right now in the early going, at least from some scores, we've seen a wide open Western Buckeye League. And this win really might be the difference for Elida as they move through the conference schedule. 
Shawnee is going to fall to 0-2. They've lost two heartbreakers against rivals. LCC last week, Elida this week, but they move on to play Bath next week. Um, Elida back in action next week as well. We'd like to thank our crew here at Shawnee High School, Director Wayne Getz, cameras, Derek Henry, Kelsey Beimer, and everybody helping us out. We appreciate everything you guys do. We have the easy job. We talk about the sports. You guys have to do everything else, and we appreciate everything you guys do for us. One final time from Shawnee High School, the Elida Bulldogs knock off the Shawnee Indians 13-9. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.